Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. I am just getting stuff set up here for the live video. So, let me just make sure everything looks clear. the volume down okay so I'm gonna go ahead and get started um so that way because this is gonna be played back later that way people aren't having to be um, slowed down or anything like that so what we're gonna need is we're going to need sorry about that I had to get a drink of coffee okay so um, for one let me say sorry it's been number one we got hit with a storm over the weekend so I didn't get to decorate the outside of the house with the Halloween stuff. Um, hi Guadalupe, I'm so glad that you're here. I didn't know if it was gonna be too early. So um, I didn't get to do the Halloween. We had a storm come through and we had no electricity for almost two days. So we were on a generator. Um, and then my kids were out of school and then I've been helping my sister set up her crafter. Okay, so, but I wanna show you guys how to make your own ironing board for, um, for your easy press. So it's gonna be similar to my Steady Betty. So it's gonna be similar to this, but it's not going to have, I mean, she has her own deal going on here with her own patent and stuff here. But it's gonna be something that's affordable, that you guys can afford, and it should be stuff that you guys have laying around the house so you can make your own board. Because I know that people are recommending those $5 mats from Walmart, and um, in my opinion, I really just don't recommend it. I think at that point you might as well use an ironing board. I mean, that's just my opinion. I just, the whole concept of it, um, I think that it's not evenly flat in a way because it's got that squish to it. So, um, and then for the pressing pillows, yes, I think that is great for um, the, the heat press because that has a lot of force to smash those down. Um, I have not tried those, so I can't knock it, but I'm just saying I think that that foam is really thick. So when you're pushing down with your easy press, I think that it would be an uneven um, layer of heat, in my opinion. I mean, because what if you're pushing on it and it's pushing, let me make sure my volume's turned all the way up on my phone so you guys can hear me. Okay, so I would think that that could possibly pro cause problems. So I get a lot of questions all the time and they're like, how come my vinyl's not sticking and I'm having to press it and press it? Number one, if you're using that $5 mat from Walmart, that is 100% your problem. I've noticed everybody that uses that has to constantly flip, flip, flip. So, um, and then like for the, like I said, those pressing pillows, if they're working for people, great. But I wanna show you what we're gonna do. So number one, you need either fabric or duck canvas. Now fabric, you can use scrap fabric that you have as long as it's gonna cover your board, um, whatever you wanna use. Um, as long as, um, to me, it's not, it's not got a layer of like the glitter or um, some type of paint on it. I wouldn't use fabric like that. Then, or you can use duck canvas. So I'm gonna show you both things today. So this is duck canvas I got from Hobby Lobby. It's $9.99 a yard. Use a 40% off coupon. You don't even have to buy the whole yard if you're, not, if you're only making one board. Um, and this is, it's not on the wall where like all the, um, uh, the batting is and stuff. It's actually over there like where the bolts of fabric are. So just, I mean, a tip on that because you may think the muslin's it and it's not it. So, you need duck canvas, and they make this in tons of colors, blue, green, red, uh, gray, whatever you can do. Then you're going to need, you actually need 100, and let me turn this this way, you actually need 100% um, cotton batting, uh, but our Hobby Lobby did not have that, so for the sake of the video today, I'm using, it's 87%, um, and then it has 12% of something I can't pronounce, but it's, it's um, polypropylene. I think but it's not polyester so um, I did see somebody else use this in a video and it did work so uh, but I don't really we'll see I mean my, we made one for my sister and it's working fine but I do recommend that you do find 100% cotton because you don't want any of the like filler plastic because then it's gonna melt over time so you really want 100% um, but I'm gonna be using this for the sake of the video and like I said it worked for us so um, so we need that, and then these are gonna be the things. We have those. You're gonna need either a, a staple gun, you need a staple gun, or you can use those little metal round thumbtacks. So if you don't have a staple gun, that's completely fine. You can use thumbtacks. Um, I have some scrap vinyl here so I can show you that it works. And then these are some of the pressing surfaces we can use. So I found these at a local junk store, and they are, like I got this one right here for 50 cents. Um, and you can see it's got the holes on the back, but this is going to be the back of our board. So 50 cents, 
Then I found this one. They had it marked for a dollar, but uh, and it's got a few little holes here, but that's no big deal. But like this will be the back side of ours. So I got that one for a dollar. You can may have some old boards laying around that don't have um, the pieces. So there's that. Then this wood right here is actually underlayment for um, wood floors. You can get this in the flooring department, super thin. So this board would be super lightweight. Um, I found this actually in my um, in my junk pile, like with my um, husband's stuff out in the garage. And it was this size right here, but it's actually perfect. It is the nine by nine, so my iron will fit on there. And as you can see, those are perfect. So the next piece is, I had another piece. So I had plywood out in the garage, perfectly cut, but you may have your husband, um, uncle, grandma, whoever it may be, may have some scrap pieces of plywood, or you can go get Lowe's or Home Depot to cut you down pieces like this. Do not buy the particle board that is smashed and all those little pieces, because that does have um, chemicals and stuff in it, and as you iron, you're gonna be releasing those chemicals, not safe. And over time, that would grow mold. So don't use particle board. Um, but this is like a hardwood, it's plywood, but um, it's hard. So here's this, and this was actually already cut too, and it's the perfect size as well, so it worked for me today. Okay, now I'm kinda gonna roll into this because I don't want the video to be too long since we're gonna work with all these surfaces. Another thing that I have is either an ink pen or um, a marker, it don't have to be a fabric marker, just to make our lines. So let's go ahead and start this, and let's make our first one and show you how easy this is. Okay, one more quick thing too. If you want to incorporate um, a Teflon sheet, you could also incorporate a Teflon sheet in here and then put your fabric on top of it as well. But um, I don't want to waste my Teflon sheets that I have here today, so we're not going to do that. And I just don't think it's necessary in, in a sense, but if you wanted to, um, you could do that. So let's start with a game board first. And then I also want to mention... If you're going to use a game board like this, it probably has some sort of sealant on it. Um, and as you can see, this is painted on. All you need to do is take a piece of, um, I did the same thing last night, sandpaper. My daughter's like sandpaper. Take a piece of sandpaper and you can just sand this down. Just go ahead and go over it. Rough it up just like that. I'm going to pull that over there. And just take off that top coating. You don't have to go real deep. Just taking off that top coating. Um, if you have a sander, do your sander. But if you don't, you just need a scrap piece of... Um, and if you've got the Tim Holtz little sand sheets, you know what I'm talking about, use those. Whatever you have. I just recommend that because, like I said, you don't know what coating they use on this. And to be safe, take off that little bit of layer. But for video purposes, we're going to proceed forward. Okay. So this is how we're gonna do this. Let me move my staple gun and move everything out of the way, make sure we're in here really good so you can see. Um, number one, I'm gonna take and lay down. I'm gonna start with the canvas first. And I've already made my sister, so I've got a chunk taken out of this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it on our board like so. And I did not invent this. There's tons of videos on this because quilters make these pressing boards for years. So I just did my research and seen what would work best for this easy press and rolled with it. So we're going to figure out, um, and I'm going to get my batting first. I've got my, my canvas under there. Then I'm going to take my batting and find where I was yesterday. Okay, here we are. I'm going to take my batting. I'm going to lift this back up. I'm going to get my batting down. And I think this is going to be a solution for a lot of people. So you're about to see a big difference when you're using your easy press. Um, you can also, another thing is, you can also cover a wooden um, TV table with this as well. So you can do the same concept to a wooden TV table. So we're going to lay our board down here. Um, and actually we're going to have it facing this way because this is going to be our back. So we don't have our holes there. And of course I've got to move my, hold on. Let me get this line back up. And I'm just doing them the exact same. Some people use spray adhesive in between these two, but I didn't find it necessary. And I also seen some people layer this up two and three layers, but I didn't think it was necessary because you really want a flat surface. You don't want to get it too thick. Okay, then I'm gonna take my ruler here. 
and I'm going to measure it at least two inches. At least two inches. So I'm gonna, this needs to be bumped, get it all even, two inches. Now let me make sure my top is two inches. I need to bring it this way just a little bit. I think that's good. Okay, so the top's two inches. Now for the sides, what I did here and the bottom, so I'm gonna measure two inches. I did my ruler this way. Hopefully you guys will be able to see down here. Yes, you can. Okay, so I took my ruler this way. I took my pen or my marker and I'm just gonna put a dot here at the two. I'm gonna put a dot here and I'll move it over and do one more dot with the two inch mark. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the side. So I'm gonna do a two inch mark. And you can rough cut this, whatever you wanna do. You don't have to get it precise, but if it's something you're gonna use for a while, you wanna use it, keep it nice and neat. So there we go with that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my ruler again. I don't know why I moved it. Let me move my steady buddy down so it's not blocking my ruler. All right. So we're going to take the ruler here um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start my line so that way I know where I'm cutting. And then I'm gonna come over here and I'll come back. So I'm just lining up my marks. Just like so. And just like that. There. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take my rotary cutter really quick and I'm gonna cut this. Okay. So let me take my handy dandy rotary. All right. And then I'm gonna come down this side here. Just makes it so much easier using, now you could use scissors for this. You don't have to have do this, but, um, cause we used scissors yesterday at my scissors, my scissors, my sister. <laughs> Oh Lord, it's the morning time. All right, okay. So we're gonna get this going. All right, okay, there we go. So there is our first piece here. So let's, let me move this stuff out of the way. So the next step that you're gonna do, you're gonna take your staple gun. Now don't judge me because I couldn't find mine and I had to get my father-in-law, so this whole side's like rusted out. So it doesn't matter what it looks like, right? So what you're gonna do, the first piece, we're gonna pull this as taut as we can. So I'm gonna do that. And you really won't be able to do more tightening until you get to the other side. So we're gonna put a staple right there, and I probably should have cleaned that off at the top by cleaning the other sides, but that's okay. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it around, I'm gonna do the opposite direction. And I'm gonna pull this as, as taut as I can. All right. We're going to put it in the staple. Now you want to avoid, if you have, and you can also use a puzzle piece, a wooden, so you know the kids that play with those, those you pull out the puzzle pieces, say I'm making a little bear and you got the little legs and the arms and the belly, uh, take out the puzzle pieces and then use the, um, the back side of that puzzle board. But make sure it's wooden, not the um, cardboard. So I did see that as well. I tried to look for one at the junk store yesterday because you could probably find those at the junk store if you don't have one on hand um, for probably a quarter. So you could literally make this with the stuff you have in the house. And if not, it's gonna be less than $10 to make. But check your Goodwills, check your junk stores. All right, put this as tight as I could. And you want a regular, this, thing, this <laughs> staple gun is like heavy duty. But um, we're just gonna continue to pull that tight. And if you have like a line like this, don't worry because it's obviously an ironing board, you're going to, that's gonna come out. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna continue to come down. I'm gonna go ahead and put one, I'm gonna go ahead and put one right here, just pulling tight. Sorry if the staple gun's really loud, guys. All right. And if you need to, like if a piece comes up, just take a little hammer on the back side of your uh, staple gun and hit it. Pulling tight.
and we're gonna do hopefully you guys I got all this in frame I'm using my new tripod so exciting it's really nice it's very helpful okay so there we go now I literally should have cleaned this a little more that's okay so let's see I'm gonna go ahead and add two more here One. So now what I'm going to do is I just kind of folded my corners um, up like so. And you can do your corners as clean as you want them. So I'm going to pull that really tight. There we go. Wouldn't that be awful if I like got a staple through my hand on video? Jesus. All right. Then I'm going to come to the other corner. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull it as tight as I can. Now, another thing I'll tell you in just a second. Let me finish this. I'm going to show you some different ways. This as tight as you can. Next one. Here we go. All right. See, there it is. So the next thing that you can do is you can take, which I didn't prepare myself for this, you can take a spray bottle of water and just get this wet, not soaking wet, but wet, because it's 100% cotton. And then take either your hair dryer or let it just dry naturally, and that will actually shrink this canvas more around the board. That way it'll be super tight. And over time, it'll actually probably become a little bit tighter because your iron, you know, brings that moisture out. So I'm gonna show you real quick, like bringing the moisture out of this board. Cause you know this cotton's gonna have some moisture. So that's the first thing you wanna prep your board before you start using it ASAP. I'm gonna show you that really quick. So let me get my temperature to, I'm gonna go ahead and get it at, I'm gonna do that 305 for 30 seconds because as soon as I'm done prepping this, let me make sure, I may need to skip this in a little bit more, y'all. I'm gonna test that really quick. Or maybe do I need to pull it backwards? I'm just testing really quick to see where I need to be. Okay, so I actually needed to bring it backwards. I think I should be good right there. Okay, so let me grab a scrap piece of fabric really quick. That way I can iron on a piece of vinyl so I'm just going to use 100% cotton. So let me grab that really quick. I may even have some in here, actually. Trina I hope you guys find this helpful hopefully I mean because that like I said that's super cheap you may have all this stuff laying around your house go check your scrap plywood and like I said you can get that cut at Home Depot or Lowe's and you can also check their scrap bin I did see somebody say last night too that you could go to Ikea I guess they I've never been in an Ikea you could go into their Ikea and I guess they have like a scrap area where say they have a cabinet door that's a dollar something or whatever um, you can do that um, Oh, that, that's a good idea, though, Trina. Because um, I am going to show you, because the clipboard would actually be good, too, because if you use um, the underlayment board here, um, it's super thin. So, I've never turned on my light to help. Hold on. Let me see if this makes a difference. Okay. Um, this underlayment board is going to make it super lightweight, so I bet yours was really light. Let's see if that lighting helps a little bit. Okay. So the iron's ready to go, so let's take our scrap piece of, oh, hold on, I lied. We're gonna prep this first. Okay, so I'm gonna take my iron, and I'm just gonna go over basically like I'm ironing this out. 
And what I'm doing is I'm pulling out any moisture that is inside this fabric. So I'm just gonna do this a little bit, kind of maybe leave it hanging around. Now see, had I used my other iron, which I could actually plug in really quick, I could actually spritz this with water and heat it up to make it kind of tighten a little bit too. But this is all you gotta do to really prep this. So I'm just kind of taking it around, like I said, just like that. And that has made that so much tighter around that board. So, you know, just do as much as you want. Let me, hold on guys, I'm gonna move my light so it's on the opposite side so maybe we won't get so much shadow. There we go. Maybe that'll help a little bit. Okay. So now that we're all prepped and ready to go, I'm just letting it kind of cool down a little bit to, to dry that moisture. And then I'm going to show you this. So I'm just gonna do it on a piece of scrap fabric. So I'm gonna do it over here in the corner. So this is that one that I got from, um, out of my um, haul from Missouri Star Quilt Company. So I don't mind using a little square of this. I'm just gonna bring it over here and I'm just gonna use so this is what I was talking about um there's a lady that I was talking to last night I wrote her name down I can't pronounce your first name but it was T Burke so um this is what I'm talking about testing beforehand this is 100% cotton I just take a scrap piece of vinyl so save your scraps you can always use them different sizes but even if it's too small save it for stuff like this so I'm gonna just cut a little square so that that board's dry enough I'm gonna cut a little square, I'm gonna set it right here where I need it. And then I'm going to set my iron on here, push the timer, and I'm gonna push. Um, one thing a lot of people don't realize, you do gotta put some pressure. It's not a lot, you'll get the feel of it as you go along with your easy press. Um, and if it's not adhering the first time, you probably didn't put enough pressure. That's another thing people may not be doing is you're not putting enough pressure, because like, you don't want to just have it like this, like I've seen people say. You, it's got to have a little bit of pressure. It's not a lot, but it is some pressure. So that's just another tip to help people out. So you just take a little scrap fabric. That way, before you go into your t-shirt that you just bought and paid for. And then, mine is Parsby, so it's uh, you can pull it hot or cold. And I don't, I guess I did not bring my tools in here. I was hoping I did so I didn't have to touch this. Since it's all the way around the square, I'm going to use my scissors to kind of pop that top off it's hot I like to pull mine hot so watch this hopefully you guys can see this see how that just came right off and there it is it's on there so just like that now this the, the other thing is I've seen a lot of people I'm not trying to downgrade Caesar at all but during the time of this easy press I have seen a lot of complaints about it's not sticking but number one it could be your surface and maybe nothing to do with Caesar but the Parsby, I have not had an issue, and it's literally $2.20 um, a sheet. And then the glitter, I think, is like 3 or $4. Um, it's super cheap, and it is easy to weed, and it, it lasts. Like, when I put this in the wash, it stays. So that's a tip, too, to test out before you go and put this on your regular T-shirt. Another thing, too, if you're having a problem, uh, you may need to pull the moisture out of your shirt. So you put your shirt down first. And then you want to put your iron on there just for a few seconds and kind of wiggle it around in the area that you're going to iron on just like that and that way it pulls out any moisture that's in your t-shirt as soon as it cools because you don't want to put it right on the moisture then you would take your vinyl put it on top and proceed forward so that's another thing um people ask me do you pre-wash first i don't um i never have pre-wash and all my shirts have stayed Perfect. So I don't know whether it's the difference between the pressing or the vinyl or what, but I do not pre-wash. So it could be the pre-wash, but at the same time, like I said, if you will pull the moisture out, that could be a huge problem of yours is the moisture. So I'm just trying to help out if any, any issues. Okay, so let's go ahead and try another board. So I'm going to do one with fabric so you can see with that. So here's this one. And now let's try the underlayment. Let's try the underlayment. So let's see, we're gonna do the same thing. Let me get my fabric. So we're gonna use the cute little elephants today. Um, this I just got for um, 97 cents at Walmart with their fat quarters. So I'm gonna lay this down first. But you, like I said, use your scraps. So 
but you could do this however you want to do it. So I'm going to do this first. And I'm not worrying about ironing it out because it'll all this will come out on its own. And then I'm going to lay my cotton batting. Oh, another tip. You also don't have to go purchase cotton batting. You can use an old towel. You can use an old um, kitchen towel. You can use an old bathroom towel. So that's cotton. You can use that as well. I'm trying to figure out where I want to start with my cotton. Let me cut this little piece off just because it's not going to do me any good. These aren't my fabric scissors, so they're not so good, but that's okay. Now, let me lay this one down just like this. All right, just making sure everything is going to be straight. And I need to make sure, okay, I got everything together. because I'm gonna have to cut this, I have it all over the place. Let me, actually, let me try to move this one more time. I'm just trying to line everything up really good. I'm like, let's, let's work together. Everybody work together. Okay, there we go. I talked to my stuff. <laughs> okay. So there we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same situation where I'm going to make sure I pull that underneath. Yeah. Now if you want to iron that, you sure can, but you don't have to. Okay. So I'm going to take my board. God knows what it ever got on it. I'm going to actually flip it this way. And like I said, you just want about two inches. And like I said as well, you can do your corners however you want to. Um, where is, let me pull this down just a little bit so y'all can see. So I'm gonna make sure this is two inches, that's two inches. Now let me do the top. The top's actually gonna be, cause I actually have my fabric down just a little bit, which is fine. Let me bring that up. There we go, that's good. Now, let me try this. Let me do this side. I'm gonna bring this up here. And do my little marks. And then bring it down. There you go. And let's see. Let me do this side. Just kind of putting some here and there. That way my ruler goes all the way down. Probably overkill, but it's all right. And there you go. All right. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put my line. All right. Let me come over here and do this side. That looks good to me. I'm gonna drag that down. And connect my two. All right, so if everybody's on the mat, I'm gonna go ahead and get the rotary and cut it. All right. So here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. If you're cotton batting and your fabric don't line up just right, it's fine. Um, I like I said, I also seen. So this is another thing. So let's. Just, I don't have metal thumbtacks on hand. Um, so, but let me just show you if we were going to say we had some for your other. So what you would do the same thing. You'd pull tight. You'd put a thumbtack, thumbtack, you know, thumbtack, thumb and you would keep going around like that. Now, this is another thing I want to show you. So if you want to be able to just pull off the top layer, um, say that you want to be able to replace it every so often, you actually want to staple down your cotton first. So come and staple your line down more closer to the board then pull your fabric and staple on this side. That way um, you can just take the staples out for your fabric, pull your fabric off and replace those. So that way you don't have to pull both off if you're gonna wanna be able to do replaceable. Um, so, and then the other thing was, um, you can, I seen where people put those little plastic feet, it looks like a push, a push pin. You can put those on the corners too to kind of lift it just a little bit if you wanted to and kind of make it more sturdy. Also for the back side, if you want to make it before I proceed forward, if you want to make this more pretty, you can take a piece of felt, you know, that covers this, 
and you can do the fusible felt and just iron it on or you could take spray and bond spray it on and um, iron that on that way the back side looks really pretty um but if you're going to be pulling off to change out i wouldn't do that so i just wanted to show that as well so let me go ahead and i'm going to show you guys this way so let's say that we were going to make this a changeable one. I wanted to check first because I actually think my staples might be too big for this. That would probably be good, huh? Good to know. So you want to pay attention to that as well. Make sure that your staples are not longer than your board. And I think my staples are going to be. But uh, let me just try it and see where they land. So actually for this one, I'm just gonna pull both sides. That way maybe it helps a little bit with my staple shortage. But definitely don't use a heavy duty one because your staples are probably gonna be too huge unless your board is thicker. Just wanna make sure I make that stuff clear. So we'll do that side first. We're gonna make sure we pull this as tight as we can. And you may wanna take your cotton batting and hold it down and make sure you're pulling your fabric tight. Just make sure you're getting both layers tight. Same thing, pulling tight. I feel like this gun is like super loud. Okay. So I'm gonna pull this tight, but I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna hold my cotton down, pull my, make sure I'm pulling my fabric as tight as possible. All right. And the thumbtacks too would be super great to pull out if you were changing your thing as well, your top. All right. Oh, don't fall asleep on me, Cricket. Stay awake. So what I do is I just kind of push the temperature button and I don't do anything to keep it awake because I want to test it on this one as well, just so you guys know that it's going to be fine. Okay, I think I got all those, and I'm going to do my corners. And like I said, you can do your corners however. You could bring it, let me make sure this is in frame. You could bring it staple here, fold this way, staple here, and then bring it like this, so that way it's a little bit more cleaner, however you want to do it. So I'm just kind of bringing mine like this. Pop in a staple. So I'm just tucking in my little corners there, pulling tight. There we go. Let's get the other one. But you see how fast this is coming along? They're super easy. All right, and then we've got. this corner so there we go so I would do the same thing so the staples my staples are just an FYI my staples were too long for this board so I can fill them now um, I really would not want to iron on top of this because I would have those little pieces but just for the video purposes use a regular either use the pin the push pins for the real thin board or make sure it's a regular staple gun a regular staple gun or just make sure you buy the shorter staples so i'm going to go ahead and nope i don't even want to do that because it's scratching the bottom it's okay cricket it didn't mean to okay so well maybe if i don't move it because i don't go to the sides we're going to be able to test the center part so i'm going to make sure i'm pulling out moisture Now for this one, because it's got a little bit of bend, because of the um, the center here, I would want to probably go ahead and put a foot in the center and put two feet on the side, you know, a feet on each corner, a foot in the center to help with that. So, let me get, just make sure I'm getting any moisture out. Let that cool down. And let's try another scrap piece. All right, we're going to try another one. So here we go. And I'm like, don't scratch my iron. I don't like that. <laughs> All right, let me make sure this is centered. All right. Learn from my mistakes. 
Okay, so that's good to go. And like I said, you can always pull the fabric, the moisture out of your fabric really quick. Let that cool down for just a second. Put this on here. We're gonna push down, give it some pressure. And we'll find out with where it has that little bit of a dip, what happens. Um, oh, I never pushed the timer, guys. Don't judge me. So I'm probably going to pick it up like 10 seconds early. Almost. I'm going to pick it up, like I said, 10 seconds early. Just because I have it set in already. All right. But like I said, if, if yours is heat or cool, definitely pull it when it's warm because it's so much easier to pull off. But there it is. It works great. So you can do the thin board as well. But like I said, definitely make sure your staples. But this is still going to work for me because I'll just pull all these staples out and I'll come back and put little ones. So you'll still see this little guy in videos. Um, and what I'm going to do with the extras, that way I have one designated to my shirts, one designated to like quilting. Um, if you're going to be making the ribbons with your iron, that way you have one for that. So you can just have several at hand. Um, now let's go back and we're going to do our thick piece of wood so we can show you that. And mine's not pretty. I mean, it looks like it's got little pieces of stuff on it and I wiped it up as best as possible. Like I said, found it out in the garage. And it's going to work great. So this is our last one here. Uh, thank you, Denise. Okay. So let's see here. All right. Let me lay down our canvas first once again. And so this yard right here, I didn't have to buy a yard and it did quite a bit. And like I said, I did my sister. Oh, also, that's another thing. My sister, we did hers on a um, a cutting board. So she had an old Paula Deen cutting board, and that's what we used. She she didn't know what to do with it. So hers is probably the size. Her cutting board is the size of this big mat here, which is what twenty four by eighteen. Um, and we used a cutting board. The only thing I would recommend is do not use bamboo. Bamboo does have a lot of moisture. So do not use bamboo. But if it's just like a hardwood, go for it. So if you got an old wooden cutting board, that's another idea. Okay, so let me get my piece of wood here. And I've got this a little bit crooked, so bear with me, guys. Okay, so like I said, two inches, which you wanna make sure and bring it around. So let me make sure if that was two inches, what it would be. Let me bring this back down. I keep getting it way up there. So perfectly, I'm doing some good eyeballing today. All right, that looks good. Let me measure my sides. Let me do this. There we go. Bring it over just a little bit. There we go, that corner. All right, so now we just gotta do these. All right, and this will be our last one. And I'll try to wrap this up. That way this video is not too long if somebody wants to replay it. All right. But I've got several things going on. Like I said, I had a storm come through, so I did not get to do my Halloween stuff yet. So you guys have not missed it. I couldn't believe it. I didn't even know that we had a storm come. My husband knew it was supposed to rain, but uh, we woke up. We had tree limbs down. We had power lines down. My daughter's like, it sounded like a tsunami was out there. I'm like, oh, Lord, child, we don't even, we've never even dealt with that. <laughs> but uh, I woke up and I heard the lightning and stuff, but I had no clue what was going on. I knew we lost power um, at like one something, so I called energy at like three. So I'm just drawing my line, guys. I draw. I called energy at like three, and it said that it was reported at 2:45. Finally, I guess so. But it was almost two days on a generator. Okay. So I'm gonna come back and use my rotary cutter. Oh, and let me tell you this. So I purchased this little guy off Amazon for 20 bucks. We found one yesterday at the junk stop for a dollar. So my sister got hers for a dollar. I was like, oh my God. So we picked it up for her. And then I'll show you in just a second what I found. I found some um, fabric samples for 50 cents and a dollar. So I bought them to use for like applique. All right. And my sister found an amazing desk that's worth like 500 bucks for 50 bucks. So 
I definitely love to junk shop. Okay, yard sales, whatever. So, um, we are ready to go. Let me make sure this is in frame before I do this. Now, I can do the separating on this one because it is thicker wood. So, everything's in frame, I believe. So, here we go. So, I'm going to take my cotton first. And like I said, I'm going to actually staple it more down this way. So, you can see how I brought it more in this way. Okay. And then, I'm going to turn this around. All right. Make sure we're bringing this tight and I'm going to get it right in there keep going yeah you don't want to stretch out your cotton so you're just going to pull it as taut as you can and there we go so I'm going to go ahead and add because you're going to do the same concept and you could always say thumbtack one part, like say the top part, so you can staple down your cotton and then thumbtack your cotton, I mean, yeah. Thumb, staple down your, your cotton batting and then you can thumbtack your um, top so that way you can pull it off easy, so that's an idea. Oh, and see how I ended up coming closer on this side? So, when I come over with my fabric, let's see. I'll just kind of bring it down underneath, but definitely make sure you pay attention and you get your staples down close here so that way they're separated. So, like I said, learn from my mistakes. That's what I'm here for. Okay. I was supposed to make this last night, but my husband's like, seriously, why don't you go to bed? I've been like running like crazy here lately. Okay. I was like, fine. Right. There we go. Let me get a drink of coffee. Oh, let me tell you, the first day we had no power because my husband didn't get the generator going till like noon. I didn't get coffee till noon. I was really sad. Okay. <laughs> my neighbor, she drove to town. Okay. So, we're just going to pull our corners. Pull our corners. And just be mindful where you're putting your staples because you will have to staple your fabric again too. there is our corners okay so now we're going to do the fabric part so that way they say this was going to be removable so I'm going to pull my fabric and this one we're going to bring down because I put that one up this one can go up oh hold on I'm trying to get ahead of myself so I'm bringing it around this one has to go right below it because I put that towards the top we're going to put this above So it's almost like making your own little canvas here. All right. So that's looking good. So I'm gonna come in, making sure where my staples are, making sure I'm catching that corner fabric, and come down. Oh, did you? Were you? Uh, that's so funny. Did you think that you were just watching a video? Okay. So, let's see. You were probably trying to, what, rewind or something or pause? Okay. So, I'm going to... Oh, let me do this first. I don't know why I try to get ahead of myself. So, I can tell I have a staple at the top there. I need to come down just a little bit. Alright. So, making sure that corner there is good and this one can go towards the top same with this one just making sure I'm capturing that and this is the plywood guys so um, if you just joined us you can you, you can watch the video back but like we use plywood you can use old game boards just make sure they're made out of wood let me get this I keep trying to get ahead of myself make sure you go to the top you can use the old puzzle boards that your kids put the wooden puzzle boards just make sure it's wooden not um, cardboard and you can use an old TV tray whatever you got laying around the house so 
Like I said, you can either make this free with what you got. Or, let me go ahead and do one more. I could have trimmed that as well, but oh well. Let me get my corners. Um, use an old TV tray. So, I think you guys should still be there. My husband was calling. So, my husband was calling. Sorry about that. Hold on. Let me make sure I'm getting my video back on. Okay. So, he called again. So, let's try to finish this up. So, I'm going to do my last. Make sure you guys are seeing this. Okay. I'm going to do my last corner. I'm going to pull it tight. I'm hoping this is not freezing. We're going to get on to the hubby. Okay. So, we're going to pull this tight. And we're going to just like that. So, there is the plywood. And, of course, I lost my iron. It turned itself off. But that's okay. It shouldn't be too heated down. I'm just hoping this is not freezing. Can you guys, if you guys can hear me, can you let me know if it's freezing on your side? Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and... I know you guys are a little bit behind me. I'm going to go ahead and pull the moisture out of here. Making sure that I'm down far enough. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and pull the moisture out of here. It's good. Okay. It stops occasionally. Hopefully, so this is going to be the last piece. So hopefully it'll come out okay. So like I said, this is the plywood. Um, And we've already got it going. Like I said, you can spritz this with water first. And use a hair dryer to shrink it around it. Or you could spritz it with water. You can use your iron. And that way it can, um, you can spritz it with your spritzer and then iron it like this. Or you can just try to pull it out with your moisture with your easy press. Thank you guys so much for letting me know. Okay, so you take your iron like this, just going back and forth. You're just going to start, you're trying to warm it up and pull out any moisture that's inside this cotton. And this is the plywood once again. And we're going to test it out too so you guys can see. I'm going to leave it setting here for a second. Leave it setting here for a second. All right. So. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. You can make them in tons of different sizes. So that's what I think is awesome because you can make what for all your different, whatever you're doing in your craft room. And I really want to make a huge one. So I want to make one that will completely cover my table too for like quilting and stuff. Um. And like I said, there's tons of videos on these, but nobody's really talking about it for the easy press. So I'm like, I'm going to show you guys. Because I get the question all the time, and I don't agree with those $5 mats from Walmart. I really don't. And then, like I said, the um, those, uh, what do they call them, the pressing pillows. If they work for you, great, but I really don't get it because it's a big, thick piece of foam. So I think if you push down on the foam, you're going to have... You know what I mean? Like, say if I'm pushing down on my foam, I would think that I would kind of have a little bit of different from the thickness of the foam. I don't know. But I haven't tested it, so I really don't know. I need to test it so I can tell you guys what, what I think of it. So I will try to do that soon in case you're wondering. Because I'm like, as much money as you pay to make those pressing pillows, I mean, you could make this for what you have around your house. Okay. So now we're ready to go. Let's test this out. We're going to take our scrap piece of fabric here. Okay. We're going to cut it. So we got scrap fabric. This is just 100% cotton. Um, that way you guys can, because um, I wasn't too big of a fan of this one, and plus I have nothing for it to go with. So I'm using scrap fabric. You could use, um, so you can figure out 100% cotton and then scrap piece of vinyl. So like I said, save your scraps for stuff like this. Test it before you do a t-shirt so you know what's going on. So I'm going to put my iron on here. It says it was ready to go. Hold on. Why did it lie? I put it up. 250 I must have bumped something hold on guys let me let it get back there let's make sure this stuck a little bit no okay just so you guys can see we're gonna put that on there let me let that heat up really quick guys well yes let me review why that's heating oh let me show you something too while that's heating okay so I found this and this and this at the junk store okay so let me kind of show you these a little bit so I guess these are like little fabric, um, little testers or whatever to see samples. So let me show you this one first. There was more, but I didn't like the colors, but I'm like, I could use these for applique. Like these are all different colors here. So I could use these for applique or whatever. 
and that was a dollar they're pricing so weird on stuff this one's like thicker almost like a burlap filling that was a dollar and this one was 50 cents which is crazy because it's huge but it has tons of different texture like vel uh, velvet and just all these cute little designs and like i said i'm going to use those for applique and once again i'm throwing these little pieces everywhere all right here we go so like i said before i'm going to pull the moisture out of my shirt and we're going to put our vinyl what did i do with my scrap vinyl did i throw it off of here i probably did we'll cut a new one all right let me get a new one i'll find it as soon as i'm done okay so we're gonna put our scrap piece there I'm gonna set this on here for which actually I should have did this so it's on my whole board and your iron I believe is nine by nine so you at least want it nine by nine or bigger so you can do this as big as you want so we have it right there now we're gonna put our iron for 30 seconds we're gonna push and like I said before you want a little bit of pressure let me make sure I'm not getting okay so you have a little bit of pressure you'll get the feel of that over time and I know I repeat myself, but so many people really don't. They think that you can just leave it like that, and you can't. you got to give it. It's a little bit of pressure. I don't know. It's probably like, say you're putting like half a pound or something down on it, you know. Okay. And then we're going to wrap this up. That way this video is not super long. Plus, my husband, of course, has something to say. Okay. So... Normally we call each other in the morning and I almost called him first and I thought no I bet I can beat him because usually he don't call me till around 9 30 or so which I guess is 9 20 so he called me a little bit early. Alright so I don't know why I'm pulling that down. Um we're gonna pull this off just like so. There's that part of the vinyl and it's stuck on there just like that. So that way if you guys are having problems using that five dollar walmart mat that people are recommending you're having a problem with the pressing pillows whatever make your own board find the stuff around the house old game boards old plywood make sure it's not particle board that press wood that's all smashed together you can use underlayment just make sure you use the right size staples you can use the old um uh cutting boards you can use uh like i said the old if it's hardwood you can use it just make sure like you're not using like a bamboo that draws moisture or anything like that um just be mindful what kind of board you're using because of chemicals or anything and like i said if you use a game board do sand off lightly sand that top layer that way you don't have to worry about any type of whatever that whatever was sprayed on top so i hopefully you guys found this helpful and that you guys are going to make you some pressing boards and now you guys would have no more problems with your shirts and everything comes out smoothly thank you so much for being here with me this morning i feel truly blessed i mean i am at uh i think almost 1400 subscribers i think i'm what at 13 i think it was at was that 1350 or something when I looked yesterday? I feel truly blessed. I would just, I'm, like I told my husband the other night, I'm like, that's like a football field. Like, if you put, you know, like we're at a game, like all those people are following me. And just, I feel truly blessed. And if you guys have any questions, you need any help, uh, just let me know. So, let's see. Yes, uh, Guadalupe, you've got to get an easy press. My sister found one at Hobby Lobby yesterday. So, Amazon has them back in stock and then um but you might hold off we don't know what they're going to do for black friday so that's just another tip but um definitely my sister because she's starting out now she tried with the iron and she's like right away she gave up she literally just started this and she's like oh my gosh but it was a big difference with uh the easy press she thought so thank you guys so much once again and i will see you guys on the next one